Hey everybody, welcome to something a little bit different for the channel. Today I'm gonna to talk about the Army Painter Speed Paints. And this is a, the Megaset box set uh, that they were kind enough to send me. Now this comes with all 23 colors in the Speed Paint line, currently there's 23. And you also get a bottle of the Speed Paint Medium, which you can use to kind of mix and thin down the, the paint. Now if you're not familiar with this, it's kind of the cheaper alternative to contrast paints from Games Workshop. So it's kind of a very thin, kind of inky uh, style of paint. This is still an acrylic paint, uh, but it has some of this medium in it to help it kind of act as a base layer plus a shade layer, theoretically, plus a highlight layer. Uh, and so if you can tell from the title of the video or the thumbnail, I painted 152 miniatures. It took me about two weeks, you know, kind of off and on on nights and stuff like that. And not 152 entirely different models, probably about 50 or so, depending on how you count it, you'll kind of see here. Uh, the main thrust of the models I did is I painted everything in this box set here, which is the Battle of Pelennor Fields sort of starter set for the Lord of the Rings game from Games Workshop. I painted the entire set of that, plus actually some additional Middle Earth uh, models and some Age of Sigmar models and some Warcry models and stuff like that, kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, so a couple of things to note uh, going into sort of the show and tell. I will have a link below that gives you kind of the paint swatches for all the different colors. Now, similar to contrast paint, and really with any paint, uh, when you look at the kind of the picture of the color on the bottle, it's not quite exactly what it's gonna end up looking like dry on a miniature, and it's all gonna depend on the undercoat. So if you paint, you know, like a pure white or like a Xenothal Prime or something like that, it's gonna tint through that thin inky color uh, on, on the model. And as well, you might paint over uh, a metallic and that'll do something different to the model. So I'll put a link to a geek list over on Board Game Geek. In that geek list, there's a, a video from uh, Goobertown Hobbies who did a great video on these paints as well. And in there, I basically just ripped out all of the swatches that he did and pasted them. So there's a place to find a static uh, reference uh, color guide, so to speak, which I used as I painted through all of these. Uh, so that's gonna be a link below. And the other thing to mention, I'll talk more about this as we kind of go through, is these are pretty much entirely with speed paints, with the exception of I did throw some metallics in there. One of the sort of habits that I got into after using contrast paints for a while was a nice mix of contrast with metallics, you know, for like swords and armor and stuff like that. And personally, I find it in terms of like, you know, getting stuff done quickly, there is a nice kind of balance or contrast between, you know, some of that sort of... Uh, uh, staticky kind of color from the contrast, or in this case the speed paints, kind of balanced with some little metallic bits here and there. And I will show you some instances here where the speed paint is actually on top of the metallics, and that does some different things there. And I did experiment with these. So there's like, some of these are on kind of your sort of standard primed, you know, just all white primed uh, or off white primed miniature, some are Xenothal primed. I did a couple that were really extreme Xenothal, which is what I've been liking uh, to do lately in sort of the style of my normal everyday thing. Uh, and a couple things like that. So I did kind of mix with some of the uh, type of media that this was gonna be on, but it's almost entirely speed paints with some metallics kind of splashed in there. And if there's any other kind of differences, I'll, I'll, I'll mention that as we go through that. But this, there are some places where I would go back and I'm like, oh, I could do a little highlight here or fix the eyes or whatever, but I'm like, no, I'm doing this for the video. So I'm just gonna kind of, so you can see kind of end result where the speed point kind of stops, speed paint kind of stops, and then maybe where you can take it over from there or if you even need to. I mean, in a lot of these cases, I would just leave it as it is. So let's jump down to the table. I'll also have some good close-up shots as well, kind of interspersed with some of the video. Okay, just kind of a close-up of the box here. You can see all the different colors you get. Kind of more importantly, on the back here, you can see this is kind of the, the swath of colors that you get. Inside the box, you get these two sort of plastic things, which you know most of the Army Painter boxes come in, so you get basically two full uh, plastic clamshells of this stuff. And you know, like a lot of other folks have mentioned, there's the dropper bottles I have. Here, if you can hear the little ball in here that helps them mix. And I have seen online where some folks are saying they had a hard time when they had to like shake the, just the ever-living bejesus out of these things. I did not have really any trouble with mine. I have had spotty trouble with some Army Painter paints like that. The only one that I personally had trouble with was this one over here. This is the Holy White, which I'm going to show you here. So here's the Holy White. And you can see at the bottom there, see how it has that kind of 
like weird mixture of the color and some of the medium and stuff like that. So you really got to shake the junk out of this stuff to sort of start to get that to disappear and have it kind of remix. This was like the main culprit to me. And I used, I think just about every color in here. There was, I think there was one like purple I didn't use or something, but the rest of them seem to be fine. So it's kind of nice that they have the, uh, the little ball in there and stuff like that. And I did make some use of the speed paint medium, which I'm going to show you here. And this also comes with a little ball in it. And this is similar to the contrast medium. Basically you want to mix the paint with this. Although I did find that water actually worked pretty well uh, as a mixer. Whereas with contrast, the water to me didn't really work quite as well as a way to kind of thin your paints. This, the water seems to work okay, but this also works pretty well. So you want to thin it down, let some of the, uh, the underlying coat come through, so especially if you, you know, sprayed it with a white or an off white and you want to kind of let some of that color come through and let the, the, uh, the actual color that you're applying only act as kind of a tint or an ink kind of thing. And on that note, I will show you the first set of uh, miniatures that I painted. You can see here a lot of these Lord of the Rings miniatures out here and some Age of Sigmar and Warcry stuff over there. Uh, so that's what 152 painted miniatures look like. The first ones I tried, these were a nice uh, starter miniature to go off. And these are some of these ghost uh, army of the dead things. And I actually tried mixing the colors here. Uh, so this is a mix of magic blue and plasmatic bolt, as well as some a uh, little bit of the speed paint medium as well to kind of thin it down just a little bit. Because in general, I found this to be a little bit more opaque uh, overall, uh, not 100% across every type of paint, but generally uh, these were a little bit more opaque than the contrast. So these here, I'll show you some better close-ups here, but these guys here, this army of the dead, these guys are a mix of those two colors. So this is not a color that you get out of a bottle. Uh, you know, from the speed paint line here. And so these are just mixed straight up on there. And then, you know, with a little bit of the speed paint medium inside. And the reason I did this is because this particular kind of like turquoisey color, I have a lot of this night haunt army and I wanted to avoid that sort of, I have a kind of a greenish color. Everybody kind of paints their ghosts a little bit green. And you can see here, this is more of a turquoise, like a blue green or teal. Actually teal is probably a better word for it. And so I'm just showing you some close-ups here. You, I did hit these with a little bit of a dry brush. Um, these are with the, I can't remember, some bone, wraith, not wraith bone, but some bone, it's an army painter color. Did just tap them a little bit with a little bit of a dry brush to bring that up. But I really liked how these worked. And it was nice to see that I could actually uh, mix the colors. And I will say that the mixing of colors, there's a couple other models I'll show you where I did a lot of mixing. That works 100% better um, than the contrast. So when you mix two contrast colors together, I don't know, a little bit weird, but um, this seemed to work more like a traditional paint, uh, at least to me, in the ones that I tried mixing. So anyway, knocking those 20 out was, was pretty easy. It was kind of a good kind of warm up to play around with, let the paint dry a little bit, come back to it, you know, go to some other models and stuff like that. Now let's go to, and these were all basically with, with a white, uh, off-white undercoat. Uh, that you would normally, uh, you know, be suggested to do. Some of these other ones I did is anethol with, but this is just a kind of your traditional sort of, you know, you've got the speed paint, you've got the contrast, whatever, and you put go over straight over white. Now these other ones here, these Age of Sigmar models, these were also just right on top of white. And you see, I did get into some metallics here, like on the blades and stuff like that. And we'll zoom into some close-ups here. So here's the Gotrek dwarf model. And again, this is just, basically the color right out of the pot. There is some mixing that you can kind of see uh, on the bottom. In this case, you can sort of see sort of the dead crushed rats. I did mix them a little bit of greens and other stuff in there. It's kind of messy in there, so I just kind of left it that way. Um, but the rest of these are just pretty much out of the, uh, the pot. And then again, there's some metallics on his like wrist and the swords and stuff and the ax and all that stuff and the, the little bit of gold on there. Now I did go back over um, those metallics there. Let's get a closer shot in real life here. So I did go back over with like the flesh tone, which, you know, a lot of people shade gold with the flesh shade. And then let's see here inside of there. And then also inside of here, I put a couple of the, uh, the grays. There's a steel gray that I use sometimes to shield the metallics. Here we go. So the metallics I either hit with this Gravelord gray 
or the runic gray. If you wanted to hit it with their grim black, you could as well. And then here, this, this was the skin color. I mean, there's the one sort of white skin color, uh, Crusader skin, and I also hit the gold with these two. Uh, so that, those are the ones that I use there to kind of act as a shade, you know, kind of like, you know, your army shades, your gnome oils, your Reichland flesh shades. So you can kind of hit your metallics uh, with those to keep that metallic thing and just kind of keep your paint line consistent. And then next we have this uh, Cruel Boys uh, boss here. And this was a fun one. Uh, this, I actually did a lot of mixing of green on the arms and the legs and that kind of stuff and mixed some other colors in there to kind of just and a little bit of dimension in there. And the rest of this was just pretty much straightforward. On this one, you can kind of see, the reason I started to do some of this stuff was on the arm here, let's look there. So you see that's kind of like this. So I went back in and actually fixed that and on the shoulder there. So part of the reason was kind of a happy accident here where I went in and I kind of started to mix a little bit and then I had let it dry just a tiny bit and then when I went back in to mix on top of it, it started to sort of reactivate the paint underneath and start to pull it right back off, which was terrible uh, in a way. But then I said, okay, so now I've, if I treat this a little bit, it's almost like having an oil paint where you put the oil paints down and then you kind of rub them off. And that's a technique that I've been playing around with lately. Now it's not as good as oil paint. Obviously it's not really meant to be doing that because you know, you get oil paint in the crevices and you kind of wipe it off with a little makeup sponge or something to get it out of the crevices. And I think because I was doing some mixing here, it ended up being okay. What I did find though, is once I had locked something down, I went back over, sprayed it with a varnish and then it was locked in. So it would not come off obviously. So then you can go back on top. So if I were to try a technique, which is what I've been doing of laying contrast paints down, and then I usually just let it dry. And then I go back in with like an oil wash or thin down oil paint in certain areas and then rub that off. That contrast paint's not going to come off. But in the case of the army paint or speed paints, that's definitely going to come off. But the easy workaround for that is if you want to do some kind of advanced technique like that, where you do a layer of speed paint and then oils, just hit it with a varnish and then you'll be fine. And that speed paint layer should be fine. And I did test that out and it worked great. Now, next one here was this uh, soul scryer model for my Deepkin army and hit this one. And again, this is just a speed painter paint, a little bit of metallics. The metallic is overlaid with speed paints on top of it. And if you look at the guy's uh, head and his hand a little bit, this is a little bit of a mix here with that, that white that I showed you I had trouble with. Here's the holy white there. I did actually put just a tiny drop of the Grim Lord Gray into that. So you can see, let's go back to the, the close up. There is a little bit of nice shading there on the kind of the top of the head down into the bottom there. So again, that mixing works really, really well here. And I like that. And I liked how this guy uh, turned out. And the reason I did that is because I wanted his kind of, I've got a couple of different skin tones in my Deepkin army and I wanted to kind of try to match one of those. And I just kind of picked the easiest one to match. Uh, which was the lighter one. And so it was, I was glad that I was able to do that. So next time, if I'm gonna you know, get some more Deepkin stuff, then I might try to match some of those darker skin tones next time. Now, popping back over to the Lord of the Rings miniatures, uh, these are a little bit hard, or this one's a little bit hard to get a picture of. And this is the, uh, the Witch King of Angmar on his Nazgul uh, uh, Drake thing. And it's hard to get different pictures, but I really like how his wings turned out there. You can see there's a lot of kind of mixing and just uh, bouncing of color in here. Uh, it may not actually be coming up that great on the camera. I'm looking through the vent lens here. I'm not seeing this. It looks really good in person though. If I'm looking, my eyes kind of going back and forth between the lens here in real life. And it, you can get some nice, you know, kind of just, I don't know, it's like a little membrane of colors and things like that. And that turned out pretty well. And then he's on there and the, you can see the bottom there. So that was a hard one to kind of get a close up of. I'll show you the close up, but you know, it's a tough one to really kind of see, you know, all the angles because it's such a weird kind of shaped model for that kind of thing. And then the last one here is this uh, troll. This is a Mordor troll. And you can see this one has, you know, a lot of the metallics on there with some of those uh, paints over the top of it. Some nice things here. Now these guys here, these were Xenothal. So you can kind of see from this sort of angle how it kind of just shades itself down. See these a little bit darker down there. And so this was kind of nice. Let's show you the close up of it. And I really like how it come out over kind of a Xenothal prime in this case. Uh, and so this was 
This was a xenothal, but it was, it was a lot of white. I mean, there was a black undercoat, but there was a lot of white in this particular case. Um, some of the others I'll show were a little bit more extreme. Uh, so anyway, those are some of the bigger models that I painted. And just kind of bouncing around here, these are some metal models. This is the old Fellowship of the Ring uh, box set that had all nine members of the Fellowship. These you can't get, but these are metal. A buddy of mine actually gave me this box, I don't know, probably like two years ago. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is a good excuse uh, to, to paint these up. So these are all done, again, with uh, speed paints, a little bit of metallics. And I'll go through the close-ups. These are actually probably the ones I like, how they turned out the best. Again, these were Zenithal primed. And we'll just kind of go through them really quickly here. So you can see here's Gandalf. I really like how his hat uh, turned out, but I did struggle a bit with the hat because something about the colors that I was using, you can see there's a little bit of blue in there. I mix a little bit of blue with a little bit of gray, and I was really happy with the color uh, that his hat turned out. You can see his robe is like a lot more gray gray, and the hat's a little bit more of a blue gray. Now the box art is like way too blue, I think. So what I did is I tried to mix that in. The shape of the hat here was really troublesome with terms of like how runny and liquidy the paint was. So it spent actually a lot of time on that, trying to get those folds and stuff like that, but I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, but something about these brimmed hats here is just, I don't know, it's just really tricky with this paint. And I, I can't really say that I've painted any brimmed hats with the contrast paint off the top of my head. Oh no, yeah. Yeah, it is, it's something about this liquidy paint with the brim hat, and especially with this one with the pointy, it's almost like a funnel. So the paint just wants to run down a trough there. But anyway, I spent a lot of time on the hat, so I was pretty happy with that. Now next we have Boromir here. I like this one. Um, really good. I tried a little bit of a darker skin tone here just because, you know, kind of, they only really have like the one skin tone, so you have to play around with some of the, uh, the wood colors, you know, the darker browns. Uh, to a certain degree. And so this one, there's a little bit of speed paint medium in it. And here, this is the dark wood color. This is kind of a nice dark tone for some skin. Usually you gotta add a, add a little bit of medium because it gets a, it's a little too dark. I mean, not necessarily for every skin, but it can be if you wanna kind of show some gradation in there. Uh, but again, back to Boromir here, I really like this. Tried a little bit of a, a redhead ginger type of a look for him. I really like this one. Again, a lot of mixing too on, you can see his leather, kind of leathery coat there. There's some nice little gradations, I think, um, in that black. It's not just like a stark black. There is some the browns and stuff that have been mixed in. So I was pretty happy with that. Now, speaking of mixing colors, we're gonna go here to Gimli here. And let's take a look at the close-up of that. You can see this reddish leather tone on sort of his cloak and his gloves and all that stuff. So his hat, just kind of the straight up leather color. There's this hardened leather here. And it's, it's being lightened up quite a bit because, you know, this was Zenithal Prime, so it's, the white was coming straight down over his, his helmet there, so it kind of lightens up that leather color. But then I would mix that hardened leather with here, this uh, Slaughter Red here. And I did this on a, a couple of models there. Because the leather in this Lord of the Rings world, it has this kind of reddish tint to it, and I, I really liked it, and I wanted to try to capture it. So mixing that in here, I worked really well and I was very happy with that and able to be able to kind of accomplish that color. So that's pretty cool. Uh, next here, we've got Aragon. And again, there's some nice tones in that brown and, and it's kind of his waistcoat uh, and his shirt under there. And he's got kind of that cloak over the top of the green. Um, and that's just kind of the straight green out of the bottle. I think that one was, yeah, that was the Absolution Green. There's a lot of greens and there's a lot of browns uh, in the set there. So this Absolution Green was nice. Uh, and the rest is some metallics and stuff like that, you know, in the normal kind of uh, pale skin uh, in there. So he turned out okay. And next here is Frodo, and you can see his sword, it's, it's a sting, is sort of glowing. So I was able to add the, uh, that plasmatic bolt um, color to so, you know, show that sting was glowing, and that was pretty cool. Um, and he turned out pretty well. And you can see the eyes aren't really done. They're just, the eyes have not even really been touched, but it's okay. It kind of actually looks like the sting is reflecting in his eyeballs a little bit. Next here, this is Merry or Pippin. I always get them confused. You can see the sword's actually a little damaged there, but this one looks good. I mean, this is a very contrasty thing. The cloak and everything's being picked up, the edges and the, you know, everything like that it turns out really well. The hair was pretty easy to do. Uh, really liked how he turned out. Uh, next we've got Samwise. You know, he his face turned out really good. I mean, there's nothing there except for just a hit of the, the skin color. And then a little bit of mixing on his head. If I remember right, I did the 
gosh, I can't remember, I apologize. I know I started with the Zealot Yellow here, you can see this. I mixed in some kind of little drop of brown to get this, uh, his hair like this. I think it was either Sand Golem or Hardened Leather, you might have to play around with that. But that was nice, kind of a sandy blonde hair. I thought that was pretty good. Um, so I'm glad that turned out the way it did. And you can see here back to, I don't know if this is Mary or Pippin, this is a little bit more of a yellow. So this is just the sand yellow, uh, not with any kind of mixing in it. So it's kind of a, you know, it's a more yellow blonde hair, you know, kind of a more of a surfer look, I guess. <laughs> um, but again, yeah, these are the hobbits that I think they all turned out pretty well. And we've got Legolas here. He's got that absolution green on his, on his cloak. Uh, again, a little bit more yellow hair. His face turned out pretty good. Again, I didn't really hit his eyes or anything like that. Uh, but again, these are Zenithal Prime. You can see the Zenithal kind of come through uh, the color. And so that's all the Fellowship of the Ring. I think I'm most happy with these, just because you know, there's a little sentiment, sentimental quality with the, the models. Plus I did some extra kind of legwork here. So just, you know, going out of the pot, I did some mixing on the hair and the different cloaks and the, like I said, Gandalf's hat and all that kind of stuff. So I was pretty happy with that. So I think before we jump over to uh, some more Age of Sigmar models. Let's stick with the rest of the uh, Middle Earth models. So if we go back here behind the Fellowship, we've got the Riders of Rohan with Theoden, and there's mounted and then you know unmounted uh, models there. Uh, so we'll go to some close-ups there, but let's start with uh, Theoden. And you can see again with his, his shirt, it's that kind of reddish brown tint. And that again comes from mixing the hardened leather with that slaughter red there. And so I really like that. And again, like his, uh, his kind of waistcoat of, of chain mail there, that's a metallic. Uh, for most of the metallics here, I use the, uh, the, the gun metal from, from Army Painter. And then sometimes I use the, what is it? The something silver for the brighter ones. Um, so I just hit it with that. And then I go over it with like the Grimlord gray is kind of a shade. Uh, in that case. So it's a good mix, kind of balance between the metallic and the, the speed paint. And then here you've got the him, him riding uh, the horse. And the horses are dead easy to do with the uh, with speed paint. It's kind of a nice thing. These are all Zenithal primed as well, I should say. And you got the kind of the, the gold ornamentation with some of the skin. Uh, speed paint on top is kind of a shade. And again, the kind of the reddish brown on him and then kind of a straight leathery brown on the horse itself. And then here's some uh, riders of Rohan. The, the shields are a little bit tricky to do. I had to kind of go back over them with some of that, that bone color from Army Painter is kind of to touch this up and then go back over it with some of the off-white and the different greens and stuff like that. But I kind of left it loose. I didn't want to go back in too much because I wanted to see, you know, how far could I push, you know, just the speed paint without going in, you know, doing a lot of detail here. So here's another one. I really like this one. Again, these are all uh, Zenithal primed. And it's very easy to kind of knock out like lots of different... Uh, colors of horse and stuff. You know, I didn't get a picture of this one. I want to show you this yellow horse. I don't know. I like this color. It's kind of a yellow brown. You know, you could do a lot of different, you can kind of get crazy with this, you know, with the different horse colors because you get kind of bored just doing, let's do a dark brown horse and then a, a light gray horse. Uh, so I may add a couple of yellow horses in there, but I really like this model here. It came out nice. The pose is really neat. And again, this is just all speed paint. You know, there's not really any, any other kind of detailing or anything going on here. Uh, here's some of the guys on foot. So this guy turned out pretty nice. You know, it's kind of a standard guy standing there. Here's another one. Uh, you can see his shield a little bit. It does get a little bit tricky there because it's got this fine kind of emblem or sort of almost like a decal on his shield. I thought it turned out pretty well. Uh, here's a guy with the spear. And you can kind of see on his, his sort of skirt there, you do sometimes get a little bit of the coffee staining like you do with a contrast paint. In this case, it's a little bit easier to sort of control because of the fact that you can sort of reactivate the paint. And so there was a point where, similar to Gandalf's hat, where the paint was kind of running down, you know, the skirt, and then it was sort of pooled at the bottom and coffee stain, but you can kind of fix that. And when you try to do that with contrast, you get the full coffee stain. Like it just, you've got to go back over and totally fix it. But here, because the paint reactivates, then you can kind of go back and sort of mix that in a little bit. So I think this looks a little bit nicer. There's not really a lot of extra work or anything here. I mean, I didn't go back in and like, you know, edge highlight this or blend it or anything. I just went back into it uh, with a little bit of, you know, a little bit of paint um, back in here and then kind of fixed it up because a lot of these little skirts on these Rohan guys were, they were pooling at the bottom. So it was an easy way to fix it. So 
it activates what sucks, but then kind of doesn't suck if you kind of work with it a little bit. So there you go. Oh, and here's another horse guy. You can see these shields are kind of a pain in the butt <laughs> with, with speed paints. That like this, you got to go in and just do uh, with the, uh, you know, sort of traditional paints, I think, with something sort of, sort of meticulous like that. But everything else I think looks good. The horse looks good. The rider looks good. Uh, here's another um, uh, archer guy. You can see again with the skirt there kind of doing its thing. And we'll just show a couple more of these Rohan guys because there's a few different poses here, um, you know, with different uh, sort of makeups of armor and, and helms and that kind of stuff. So next we're going to take a look over here at these orcs and there's like 24 orcs in here. And there's a lot of metal <laughs> and armor on these guys. And that's what really made me sort of strive to grab some other uh, non Lord of the Rings models to paint because I did a poll on my, my guild on Board Game Geek and I was like, hey, which box that should I paint up with speed paints? And this one won by fair margin. And, but once I started to paint it, I was like, oh man, like these are all metallic and they're all kind of the same. I'm like, that's not really gonna showcase. So I do wanna sh showcase the, the, a little bit more of the speed paint over metallics. And I think it does turn out well here, but again, I, I sort of broke out of this box because I wanted to highlight some other techniques. So first let's jump into the detail of this orc here. And I did not use the orc skin on this. I actually went for, uh, I'll show you back here, the malignant green. And Lord of the Rings orcs are weird because in the movies and stuff like that, they have like this weird gray, like just black and white look on their skin. And it's not that interesting to look at on the table. So, you know, going with the kind of a, Warhammer orc with the green skin um, and I didn't want to go full on orc skin so I'd use the malignant green I thought it turned out okay it's kind of a lighter paler green because there's like a paleness to the orcs so anyway that's what that color is there and then there's a lot of metallics you can see here and a lot of the um, now this one was the darker one this was the this was the grave lord gray I stayed away from the lighter one because I really wanted to hit uh, have a good amount of contrast between the recesses and the surface of these all these armor pieces here. Uh, so we'll take a look at this guy here. So these guys are really dead simple. I mean, it's like red cloth underneath and then lots of armor and then a little green face or hands. And then this chubby looking guy here, just gonna kind of go through these quickly. This guy with the fork, I mean, lots of metal, but it looks good. Like I think it looks, this was pretty good. You throw down the gunmetal gray or the gunmetal not the gunmetal gray, the gunmetal, the silver paint, and then go back over it with the Gravelord gray. And then you just hit it with the, uh, this is the slaughter red here. That's what the color red is there. So it looks pretty good. I think it's pretty Lords of the Rings orky type of vibe there. So I did a bunch of those and it was really easy to knock out, you know, really quick. Um, and then we'll bump over here to take a look at some of these elves. Now these are not in the box set. This is another box my very generous friend gave me. He gave me a couple of boxes of this stuff. Uh, these are the uh, Rivendell elves. I believe these are like second age. So like at the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring when they're fighting Sauron before the current day events or whatever. Uh, this is cool. I like this. So I've hit it with the gold. I think it's called Glorious Gold or something. That's an army painter paint. And then I went over it with the flesh uh, speed paint again. And then the dark blue uh, the cloudburst blue is what that you're seeing on this cloak here. These guys are very simple. Um, a little metallics, a little bit of the wood on the weapons. Um, here's the archer, same idea, wood on the bow, a little silver on the back of the arrows, and really easy to knock out. I really like how these look. And these look pretty close to the box art just doing this stuff here. So I like those. And then these are, I think, the humans that are in this particular box. It's like a weird mix of humans and elves in this particular army. Um, so these guys were pretty straightforward there. I mean, I just kind of hit the, everything was silver because I, I wanted to go back in and highlight these, but I made a promise to myself not to go beyond speed paint, but I did hit it with some metallics on some of the things there. And I think this turned out okay, these guys with the shields. So I did those, just zooming out here. So we got all this stuff covered now, all the Rohan guys, all these guys. Now there's a couple of the War Cry war bands here from the latest uh, Red Harvest box set. Now the thing to know about these is this is a very, I call it extreme Xenothal. Everything else that you've seen so far has been kind of a Xenothal, but you know, using a little bit excessive on the white and the gray, just because you know we're working with speed paints. Now again, these guys here, and then the ghosts over here, that was just your standard like off-white, no Xenothal, nothing fancy there. These are very, very extreme, and I kind of like how it worked um, 
but it's kind of you kind of that little give or take i'll just say up front before we start talking about them this warband in front really like these models these are all a bunch of conan knockoffs i do not really like the models at all in the back it's like the spider warband and you can see here let's just zoom in before i get to the details they're very spindly and pointy and stuff and not that interesting to paint i don't know so i really don't like how those turned out if i had to say my favorite models the fellowship of the ring by far my least favorite models to paint and has nothing to do with the paints <laughs> just i don't like those models uh, so let's cover them first and then we'll jump to the conan models so we'll start with the leader of this warband and i don't even like them so much i don't care what the name of the warband is these are the spider people um so yeah so you got a lot of metallics and stuff here like they have a weird kind of gray ashy skin um you know you've got kind of a weird yellow face mask type of thing this is the one i kind of like this model uh, there's probably two models i like this one and i uh, got yeah, this one here and he's got the big old kind of fork pointy thing like i don't know they're fine it's just they're not that interesting there's not like volume you know to paint uh there so we'll just kind of let's see the next one here he looks the same as the last guy with his little sticks in the back this guy's got like a little net, you know, okay, great. He's got his little stick. And then this one, yeah, it's so big deal. Like, they're all kind of the same. That's really hard to tell them apart too. Cause it's like, oh, these have two uh, of these, you know, bladed weapons. This one has the curved one and this one has that one. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. And so next we'll go to the, uh, the Conan knockoff war band. And I really like how these turned out and they honestly look um, you know, we're zoomed in here close on the details. So you're seeing a lot of the flaws. Cause again, it's just very, very extreme. Like it's very dark on the underneath part of these models. And on the top, it's very, very white. Um, and I really like how these look on the table because you can see them, you know, you're standing three feet away. And because of that extreme, they actually look really good. Uh, so here's the leader guy. I really like how he turned out nice kind of, you know, lighting on his face, you know, getting down gradually, gradually till it's darker. This is fun. I put a little bit of a darker skin. Again, that dark wood, a uh, little bit of speed paint medium to thin it down so it wasn't so, so dark. Um, but it, again, similar to how contrast will stick. Um, I think in this case, you want to be maybe, um, if you're going to do a Zenithal, you want to be a little bit more liberal with the speed paint medium in general than you would the contrast medium. Now there's some colors in the contrast line. You don't really need to mess with that medium too much. In my opinion, there's some that are super opaque in the contrast line, but I think in general, they're much more opaque. There's a couple that aren't, you know, like the yellow is not very opaque. You probably don't have to mess with that too much. Um, but in general, I would, I would play with the medium a little bit more if you're trying to do like a Zenithal thing like this guy. And the next guy here or gal, I should say is, um, she's kind of like the shaman of the group. Uh, so she turned out uh, pretty decent there and you know she's she's doing what she's doing you can see it it does get kind of dark at the bottom but i like kind of the contrast again there you know it looks good again on the table where you can see you get a really good pop on their heads and their hands and stuff like that and then finally here is the total conan knockoff he's i gave him white hair because why not so this is kind of an older grizzled conan who's you know seen things <laughs> and turns hair white uh but it looks good i mean Again, not a lot going on. It's very light on the top. And then if you look at the bottom, it's kind of like dark and muddy, you know, but uh, again, it looks nice on the table because he really, he sort of has a little light kind of popping off the top of his head. Uh, and then this gal here, she's kind of hard to get a good angle of the picture because she's got this ax in front of her face, uh, but she looks pretty decent too. Uh, this guy, I really like how this guy turned out, kind of the weird Wolverine sort of knockoff. I should probably go back in and fix up his eyes. Um, but he's pretty good. Maybe I'll grab him so we can see him kind of in real life instead of in that sort of Lightroom type of thing there. So we do him. Yeah, see, he looks pretty nice there. There's some good uh, shading there. Again, this is a really sharp Zenithal. So a lot of white on top, but you don't have to go very far down before it starts to turn dark, dark gray and black underneath on the undercoat there. So I think this guy turned out really well. I like his thing. And he kind of looks like, you know, Wolverine or something there. Uh, then this next guy, again, I played a little bit of a darker skin tone on him. I think it looked, I think it turned out pretty good. Another gal here did not play with the skin tone. So you can see kind of the Zenithal, uh, the, the, the strong Zenithal, you know, the contrasty Zenithal does darken that skin up a little bit and kind of has a nice medium tone, you know, kind of between white and black. It's kind of in the, in the, uh, well, not black, but dark brown and, you know, kind of a lighter brown. So there she is on this guy. I like this, how this guy turned out really well. Um, again, this, this was kind of a nice happy accident with the Zenithal coming from the top, really catching his nose, but not hitting his eyes or his chin. 
and, uh, and it came out really well. And it's nice to have that kind of could just, you know, builds in that shading. I did kind of a weird kind of blue color in his hair just for fun. Uh, but he turned out pretty well. And just a couple more of the gals in here. Just, you know, nothing real special here. Just kind of quickly done those two. And she's got the big old spear there. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up. You know, uh, you know, kind of go into the different groups and stuff. So hopefully I showed you some different kind of techniques and stuff that you can do with it. Obviously the different primings are going to be uh, kind of the key aspect of it because we've got our strong Xenothal, our non-Xenothal, or kind of normal Xenothal with a little heavy on the white and that kind of stuff. But overall, my general review of it is that I really enjoyed these. Having the sort of happy accident in some ways with the uh, this ogre boss guy here, or, or, or Oric boss, um, was interesting with the whole mixing of paint and then reactivating paint, something to keep in mind. Uh, this is something you gotta know. I think I don't think it's really a plus or a minus. It's just, okay, this paint's gonna reactivate if you hit it with anything wet, <laughs> you know, before you varnish it. And I should just stress here, I mean, this is like hours after it's theoretically dry. I mean, I think even the next day you would pick up some of these paints. And now it doesn't necessarily apply equally to all the paints I found. Some paints definitely reactivate quicker uh, or more than others. But um, but I think it's okay. Like if you really got to have some kind of mixing or multimedia kind of thing to it, then just hit it with some varnish and you'll be fine. No big deal. Uh, anyway, hopefully that was uh, informative to folks. And uh, thanks for watching. And any questions or feedback or anything like that, then definitely let me know. Thanks.